Good afternoon, officially 12 o'clock. Good afternoon on Friday. Hope you've had a good week and thank you for joining us for uh, this week's episode of Sicilian Live. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a special guest with us today, uh, Mo. We'll just call him Mo. Uh, for, for Microsoft, Mo, Mo looks after all things Teams, uh, device, Teams rooms, devices at, at Microsoft. And uh, prior to that, worked at one of the, uh, the biggest Microsoft Teams distributors. Uh, so it's, it's great to have Mo with us. Uh, I'm also joined, as usual, by Iqbal Javed, who's our Head of Modern Workplace uh, within Sicilian. So again, welcome. Welcome, Iqbal. Um, so today, we are talking all things Microsoft Teams meetings. Um, it's probably fair to assume that all of you on this webinar are aware of what Teams is. Um, I'm sure many of you are using it, being forced to using it, driving the usage of it across your organization. Um, I'm also assuming it's fair to assume that you probably have some familiarization that there are these things called Teams meeting rooms or MTRs, uh, as Microsoft like to call them. Um, and just to kind of recap, really, before we, before we kick off, um, you know, there's been huge innovation, uh, as, as I'm sure many of you know, around Microsoft Teams uh, really since launch, but of course accelerated massively since um, you know, February, March through the COVID pandemic and beyond. Uh, And for those of you that uh, were able to join us or managed to tune into any of Microsoft Ignite uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, you would have seen some really incredible advances of of, uh, features that are rolling out either either now or over the next couple of months, certainly this calendar year, uh, into Microsoft Teams meetings as a result of um, this kind of new hybrid way of working or or home-based working that that many of us are are, are still doing. I know me, me personally, I've managed two or three trips to... Uh, two of our offices um, since March, and it's uh, it, it's strange. We had a we had a new employee, say new employee, has been with us for seven months now, and he had his first trip to the office yesterday. So it's it's, it's quite interesting the world obviously that we're in. But but for me, you know, um, it, Ignite last last week week before um, brought some really great new innovations for Teams meeting rooms, which I think it was it was needed. Um, some of those have started rolling out. I think you know one one of the most pressing. I think is the integration, native integration with um, other platforms such as Zoom and Webex, which we've seen. I think what the, the Zoom rollout is all, is already happening. Um, we, we've seen more of the the, the key Teams features like um, raise your hand and live captions and some of those features coming into the, the meeting platform. So, so there's a lot of innovations. I'm not gonna not gonna ruin it on on this intro because we'll cover some of those in in due course. Um, and, and and many of you know Sicilian. I know we work with many of you uh, that are joining us today, and some of you are new. So it's a welcome um, to Sicilians uh, live. Um, we we spend a lot of time, and and, and Iqbal, your 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 team spend a lot of time working with with customers on really how to get the best out of meetings with, within uh, within Microsoft Teams, whether that's new deployments, whether that's coexistence with uh, existing room systems and technology, whether that's to assist with that migration from Skype for Business Online into Teams, um, or whether that's just really starting out and looking at you know how we uh, how we re-architect and how we redesign meeting rooms for, for this kind of post-COVID era. So we'll be talking a little bit later on about some of those things as well. Um, so so to start off, I'm going to hand over to Mo. Um, Mo is one of the most passionate people that I know. Uh, around uh, Teams meeting rooms, hence the T-shirt that, that he's wearing today. Um, I'm not sure if we can get you one, but please do ask and we'll do our best. Um, so, so, Mo, I'd like to hand over to you. Um, please do give us a, an overview of kind of where, where Microsoft are on their journey around Teams meetings and what's inspiring some of these new um, innovations. Sure, thank you. And um, thank you, team, for giving me the opportunity to join you on your live event. Um, <clears throat> COVID-19, wow. Um, what a crazy six, seven months it has been. I mean, I joined Microsoft in uh, kind of February and I must have spent about three days in the office. And then literally after that, we were on lockdown and everything has been virtual since then. But surprisingly, even for somebody like me, who was technically a new employee at the time, um, Teams as a platform has really helped support me um, to be able to kind of, you know, carry on with work. Um, when we start, if, if we start taking a look at kind of past pandemics, you know, the, the great Spanish flu that killed millions worldwide, sometimes, you know, it takes these great kind of pandemics in history for us to be able to 
kind of mature and move on as, as a species with new technologies and new services. I mean, the great Spanish flu as a, as a classic example, Rob, was, uh, you know, it, it kind of paved the way for World Health Organizations to share data uh, between kind of countries. Um, even, you know, when we look at disasters, um, the terrorist attacks of 9-11 as a classic example, it's quite normal for us to go to the airport and have our liquids taken away or take your shoes and belts off. But actually, the result of that meant safer air travel for all of us. It's actually safer to travel via air than it is driving your own car. And COVID-19 has been no different, right? It's this new hidden danger that we never thought of um this we're now so conscious about being around people and wearing masks and stuff and what we wanted to do from a microsoft standpoint is you know kind of give the tools um required for customers and and just humankind for that matter to be able to stay connected um at a distance in terms of remote working we did a whole bunch of market research around uh, kind of brain waves and in fact you know we've got a slide that we'll just show you in a second um which is effectively talking around things like um, uh, brain waves and fatigue levels. I'm sure you'll agree at the very beginning of March when you know the UK took COVID seriously, we started working from home. There was this you know, mass uh, exodus of people clambering for webcams and jumping on video conferencing, et cetera. Um, and and uh, you know, as we started doing that, we quickly found out that wow you know working from home started off sounding like a great easy thing to do but by the end of the day when you're back to back with video calls you start feeling really really tired and i've been on many many calls with iqbal and rob and the team where you know we're, 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 we're the third webinar in and all of a sudden they're absolutely shattered so microsoft did a whole bunch of market research and and found out that when you have a lot of video calls especially those calls in a grid view where, where you've got 49 different video feeds. At the very beginning, we were all saying we want 49 video feeds, but actually we found out very quickly the fatigue levels on the brain are quite drastic. You know, you feel very tired. I have to kind of remind myself to book toilet breaks in between uh, video conferencing uh, at the minute, and I'm sure you guys will probably have the same issue. But using this information really helped us pave the way around Microsoft Teams as a platform and to ensure that we bring the correct products and services and updates to the platform to really help in this new way of working. Um, in fact, if you move over to the next slide, you'll see we brought a whole bunch of updates which you should already see on your platform um, right now. Things like together mode, where we virtually cut out using Microsoft AI technology, you as a person and put you into a virtual room and watch this space. We're going to be bringing some new updates and new backgrounds to cater for this. As you can see above where we've got a virtual bar, it, it's quite normal for us to be doing virtual high fives um, when, when, when we're in the together mode. Things like background blur, even the ability for you to be able to add applications um, that ask questions to see how your staff members are faring um, um, with with this new way of working these sort of features you know we're bringing to the platform and in fact we're working very closely with our partners uh sicilian and our oem partners as well uh, to bring these products and solutions to life um it is really really interesting um that covid19 landed on us but in fact it has uh in my opinion been that catalyst um, for IT administrators and managers to actually start looking at the technologies that we have today and probably had for the last year more seriously and how we can actually collaborate in this new way of doing things. Um, I'd just love to get your thoughts on that, Rob, and, and, and on what you see on the market today as well. Yeah, I think I think you know uh, we've spent a long time you know on on anyone that's a regular listener to us will know we you know we spend a lot of time talking about COVID. You can't you can't not talk about COVID, right? It's 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 paramount, and you know come Monday, we'll probably be moving moving into a different direction. But but I think uh, firstly, I think it's ironic that Microsoft chose bars and coffee shops and all the things that are likely to be closing again next week as the as the kind of virtual background. I'm definitely going to be a fan of uh, uh, of some of those things. But no, I think you're right, and I think. I think the key thing that we've seen, I think it's been it's been really interesting the last the, you know the last few months, and you know we've seen um, we, we, you know we've seen customers do some some real big innovations and move projects forward really really quickly. Some strategically, so where we've had customers that have been already looking at Teams or using Teams, then we've seen huge growth in in in, in that use, not just around meetings, but actually the. The, the key aspect kind of what happens before the meeting as well as what happens during and of course what happens after and i think a lot of people focus on 
the actual meeting and just joining these video calls and um you know i'm sure like many of you I, I spend probably six hours a day on video calls and you know and and in many ways it's great because it allows me to you know be so much more productive i'm not wasting time traveling um and, and those kind of things but it but it is important as you say to think about the other things within teams as a platform that does help you be more productive you know and i think for a lot of people where uh, other technology has been deployed as shadow it um you know, and, and without naming, uh, you know, that Microsoft's competition in that space, you know, it's 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 been a challenge as well, I think, for organizations that have been on a platform, had a, had a journey they've been working on. I mean, you know, sometimes other technologies come in place and we're now in a kind of displacement mode. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of these things that you talk about are really important. Um, and I think, but I think the thing that is, is fundamentally even more important, where I think it's really been great to see some of the improvements and the focus is on that ease of use um and i think you know teams has been criticized i think in the past but it's not always the most intuitive and i think certainly some of the updates that that we've been talking about uh you know updates to 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 recording and transcription for example you know the the ease of join function and those kind of things are also really significant um in just making it a really really simple experience so i think a lot of people in meeting rooms have kind of got it you walk into a room you press join and you know that yeah. that's a relatively consistent experience now um but yeah to me that's some of the stuff that really jumps out that that is is really important as well as this kind of really cool sexy technology stuff sure i mean it's really <clears throat> excuse me it's really interesting that you say that i mean we've seen a lot of kind of um feedback and and, and kind of uh, results out there in the wild where we've seen a lot of companies that have a 12-month deployment timeline to roll out teams as a platform for all of their users and because of covid they've rolled it out over a weekend and we've seen very minimal amount of customers feedback to say they've had any issues. So actually, I mean, if you, if you consider the great British public, we are, we hate change, right? Anything changes, we kind of have a massive uproar around it. But kind of COVID-19 is, as, as like I said earlier on, has been a catalyst. And as IT managers have just switched on teams for their, for their staff members, we've kind of just got on with it. You know, we've kind of just started using it and not complained as much. But Teams has brought so much more alive. Like you said, yes, you know, the competition out there provides some great um, uh, services. But what is Teams? Teams is bringing everything together. It's bringing the very best of the Microsoft ecosystem, the ability for you to be able to actually, you know, co-author and coordinate with your with your colleagues um, and then have that same experience, <clears throat> excuse me, have that same experience moving into the meeting room space. In fact, we did a whole bunch of market research around meeting rooms and um, on the next slide, you'll see um, what I mean. Um, <clears throat> this slide here was actually done before COVID-19 uh, was even a thing. And we did a bit of market research around meeting spaces. And we found out that on average, a user in a normal work environment would have around 10 meetings a week. That's meetings where you sit with a bunch of people and actually kind of conduct some work. And the one that I really want to pull your attention to is the bottom half of that pie chart where we've got status at 27% and collaboration at 22%. And effectively what that means is status types of meetings are those meetings which are very similar to the one we're doing today where you're having a communication with you know, your, your, your colleagues, but it's more of a kind of one way communication where you're presenting back and not really much else. And then on the flip side, where we've got collaboration is where you get a bunch of people inside of a room and you work on a single project, a single document, a single canvas, and actually want to yield results at the end of it. And those meetings are, of course, on the increase, because bearing in mind this, this, this report was done prior to COVID. So we've actually seen collaborate, collaborative type meetings really shoot up into kind of the high 60, 70 percent versus kind of the status driven meetings. And I guess... It's really important for us as customers to identify not only the amount of rooms that we're looking to kit out, but more importantly, what types of meetings actually take place there. So now that we've just moved on to this new Teams platform and we've got our staff members over the last six months starting to use Teams and starting to collaborate, how are we actually using those rooms with this new return to work phase? We're seeing um, this new hybrid way of working, right? I mean, I'm sure um, um, the audience here would agree with me. There's the biggest challenge on everyone's mind today is 
how do we return back to work with social distancing rules? And working with our partners, Sicilian and our OEM partners, we're bringing a whole bunch of different products and services and solutions, which I'm sure Iqbal will talk about a little later on, um, on how we can support you with this new return to work hybrid way of working. So as an example, we're seeing some customers who are saying, well, we're just going to completely close off meeting rooms full stop, which is absolutely not the right way to do things. I'd highly recommend if you are thinking of doing that, speak with the team here because we have a whole range of solutions that can help support you with that return to work phase. We're seeing customers that are saying, well, we're going to stick in a rotor in place where you've got one week in the office and one week off. So you have 25% of the workforce returning back to the work uh, to workplace and then the other remainder working from home. And then more popular we're seeing is um, reducing the number of people inside of a meeting room space. So if you have a 10 person meeting room space, then you restrict that by 50% and have only a maximum of five people to maintain that social distancing rules. And we've worked very closely with some of our OEM partners and even teams, and you would have heard some of the announcements um, at Ignite, where we're bringing technologies like um, camera counting. So while you're on Teams, if it detects, let's imagine you're in the room with a maximum of five people, and if it detects six or seven people walk in, it will pop up a little banner across the top of Teams on the screen inside the room to say, hey, you've exceeded the amount of people in the room. And then we can actually work with our OEM partners and bring technologies where it will alert the likes of facilities or security if you're really daring. Um, and it will kind of alert them to say, hey, we've got 15 people inside of a room that's only supposed to have five. Um, so you can maintain those rules. We're bringing things like um, proximity based join. So you can use your own personal device to actually join into a meeting without the need of you physically having to touch a public surface on the table. We're also later on this year going to be bringing the power of Cortana. Um, so you'd be able to walk into a room and say, hey, Cortana, Cortana, start my meeting, and it will just automatically start that meeting up for you. So we're bringing a whole bunch of services and solutions for customers. And in fact, if, I, if we move over to the next slide, just to give you a bit of a snapshot in terms of what it looks like in terms of recommendations, and by no means is this a, this is the hard, fast way of doing things, you know, uh, working with the team here at Sicilian, we can build out bespoke solutions um, for you. So as an example, on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see where we've got meet and present and meet and co-create. Essentially, meet and present is those status-driven meetings we were talking about, and meet and co-create is where you get a bunch of people inside of a room. And then running across the top of this slide, you'll see the different types of rooms we have. So a large office is effectively like an exec level office, a focus room is starting to see more and more of them, especially in today's day and age uh, with COVID-19. And then you've got the more traditional types of layouts, your small conference room, medium conference room, all, all the way up to the extra large conference room. And the team here would work very closely with you to understand what types of rooms you have, but more importantly, what are the room personas? What types of meetings actually take place there? So if you're thinking of a exec room, um, you know, a collaboration bar, for example, the VC210 from Yearlink um, is, a, is a great device to be able to use in these focus rooms or in an exec room if they just want to kind of present and maybe share some content. But then when you're looking at things like co-creation, there's other devices out there like the Microsoft Surface of, like uh, Microsoft Teams Rooms devices with touch screens and a whole range of different solutions. And then, of course, you know, we have things like coordinated join that have come where you can have two different distinct products like the Surface Hub and an MTR to be able to work together with a single join button. And again, you know, I highly recommend reach out to the team here and they can build based on what your plans are for teams or how your teams are utilizing the team's platform, what types of meetings actually take place inside here, as well as maintaining kind of social distancing and bringing a solution so you have the same experience when you're working from home and then when you do finally move into the workspace, you have the very same um, consistent user experience on Teams. And Iqbal, I'd love to get your thoughts in terms of the modern workplace piece and, and, and what you're seeing. Correct. Yeah, no, thanks. That was great, great overview, Mo. Um, I, this is really interesting, as you say, you know, we've kind of gone through this pandemic and uh, so much has changed for everybody. Um, we're all at a stage where majority of the workforce still working from home today. Uh, we're, all, we're all used to collaborating in this way from, uh, from our desktops and uh, uh, meeting rooms hasn't quite been top of agenda 
clearly the you know the objectives being around uh, getting teams set up and enabled provisioned uh, with um, user adoption in place to ensure that the workforce are able to continue working as they are today so i think we're we're now kind of gone way past that and and as you said Mel, we're we're all thinking about that return to work at some point you know there's rumors well depending on which organization you work with but we were kind of earmarking January potentially after Christmas is when we'll start to look look at working back in the office and um, Mo you mentioned there you know um, the last thing you want to be doing is thinking about getting rid of all your meeting rooms because what's the point we can't sit together so what why why continue to invest in that technology where um, we will be going back to the office and not necessarily meeting but then when you think about why you will want to go to the office is because you want to be collaborating together with people in a room together. Now, it's all well and good doing that. What happens to that 50% of the workforce that are sat at home working on their desktop? How can we deliver a more of an inclusive experience for those people that are working from home in, in being able to deliver a true hybrid experience? And I think this, this, this is such an important point that certainly I'm discussing with my customers is it's almost the unknown because a lot of organizations haven't had that where they've they will consistently have 50 percent of their workforce working from home and these are teams right teams of people not necessarily all able to come in um where where half or maybe more uh, of those people are working from home and others are, are in the office and and being able to deliver that true collaborative experience means you need to be able to have a natural conversation with those that are in the room with you and also be able to engage those that are connected in via VC. Um, I was on a call recently with a customer that they've, they've some of those um, individuals were in the office in a meeting room, somebody had their laptop and their webcam uh, open up and I was connected in remotely. Now, I could barely make out what some of the people in that room were saying. I just, I, I never felt part of the meeting. And that's fundamentally the biggest issue here. And and I think for this reason, it's, it's absolutely imperative that organizations do look at this seriously and start really thinking about what the future workspace looks like. And um, what we are now seeing is a lot of these larger rooms um, are perhaps being consolidated into multiple uh, focus huddle or small conference rooms to 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 be able to um, allow more people to come in and be able to collaborate together. So, yeah, so I mean, that's kind of, you know, uh, a high level view of what I'm seeing today and I think that's, that's this is where conversations are going with many of our customers. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, sorry to chime in there, you, you made some really, really valid points there. I mean, we see a lot of uh, customers that attempt to kind of make their own devices per se. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, absolutely. I've seen it happen many, many times, even before my time um, at Microsoft where, you know, we assume that, hey, if I've got a, if I've got a touch screen or maybe a normal screen up there, what if I just get a laptop or a desktop and I stick the Teams platform on there and then that becomes my meeting room and put a webcam at the top? Yeah. Granted, it's a cobbled together kind of way of doing things and initially it may work to a certain degree, but give it two months and you'll start seeing the real issues start uh, coming up because those devices are not designed for a collaborative space. Um, so where Microsoft are very keen and they're very strict in terms of certified devices for, for Microsoft Teams. So we work very closely with our OEM partners and we effectively give them a whole list of things that these devices must have. For example, you turn them on and off, it has to boot back into the Microsoft Teams application so customers can't accidentally change any settings. Security, they have to have TPM chips on board all the way down to cable management and what microphones look like. So again, like I said, I mean, we work very closely with OEM partners to ensure that only if only do they satisfy every single one of those needs, do we give them the stamp of approval to say, this is a Microsoft Teams certified device. So I'd highly encourage and recommend that if there's any customers out there that are trying to cobble together stuff, do take a look at some of the solutions Cecilia have to offer um, because that's where the real value comes in. That's where the real return on investment comes in, where you've got purpose-built devices for meeting room spaces where you have no real maintenance required because these are quite self-sufficient devices. And of course, you know, utilizing, you know, the services provided by our partners such as Sicilian, it's really a hands-off approach. There's no concern, no worries for you as an IT administrator um, and no resource required because, you know, our partners can handle all of that for you. And you know what? I think I think the other thing to add is is 
And one of the points that you touched on it about was, was actually about what happens in a meeting. And, and I think, you know, there's been some, I think technology announced last year that I think was was probably in some ways seen as, oh, that's quite cool, but so what? So, you know, the ability, for example, to to capture, we've all been in that meeting, right, where you've got you've got a bunch of people in a boardroom or a meeting and someone you know stands up and they start drawing on a whiteboard. And of course, the people at the remote end of that have got no idea or someone gets up and moves the camera and they're trying to vaguely see what someone is, somebody's scribbling on a whiteboard. You know, and, and actually, you know, what we've seen really come to life, you know, o- over the last few months as people have been returning into work and, and working on this hybrid model is, is people deploying these these uh, content capture cameras as they're known. Um, that if you've not seen it, really great, and actually we'll share a video afterwards, but the ability to actually have a secondary camera or third camera, depending on how many you've got in your room, that is is pointed at a physical whiteboard, you know, a normal traditional white wall or whiteboard, um, and it's able to digitally capture what's being drawn on that wall and, and present it actually through the Microsoft whiteboard application within Teams back to everybody else. Um, which is which is really phenomenal, you know, for, for that mindset because people are quite. Um, whilst you might look at things like Surface Hub and that kind of great stuff, you know, for for many organisations, those things are either cost prohibitive or particularly now, nobody really knows how those things are going to be going to be used. Um, and I think what that's done as well, from what, certainly what we've seen, um, is a huge drive from the um, f- from the user community side into other modern devices, so devices like Surface, for example, or, or, or you know, Dell XPS with touchscreen, where we're really trying to get people to uh, express how they feel and express their ideas. And of course, most people in a meeting room do that. Anyone that's been in meetings with me knows the first thing I do, if you if you ever came into our, our meeting rooms in, in, in London, you know, I'd be straight up on, on, on a Surface Hub drawing things out. You know, if customers are talking to us about scenarios or challenges, or whatever they're doing, you know, you give them a pen and ask them to draw what, what's kind of going on. Um, and that's something that generally happens in a face-to-face, in-person meeting all the time. And I think a lot of the time, that's where that gets cut off. So, so we've seen, and certainly it's something that, that, that I do a lot, is you know I'll use um, a surface device to you know in in the meeting and just be able to pick up a pen and start drawing. Um, and yes, you can do it with a mouse and and everything else, but it's ne- never quite the same. So I think we've seen a massive surge. I mean, I'm sure Microsoft have as well of of, of customers looking at you know particularly some of the new entry level surface devices um, as a means to just help their teams get used to that different way of working. And I'm a big fan of pen and ink in OneNote, as many of you know, but um, so there are also other things that I think are really, uh, I think definitely a, a tip I'd give is, you know, if you're not using whiteboard, if you're not using, if, you, if you've got surface device, but you're not using pen and ink in a meeting, um, I really feel it gives people a bit of that freedom to express what we're thinking. And that to me is the big thing you miss out on, on online meetings versus face to face. I just wanted to throw that one in there. See, I, lo- I love the fact that you did bring that up because when we talk about meeting room spaces, a lot of customers assume it's just video and audio conferencing, but actually, you know, with the power of kind of the Microsoft ecosystem and, and some of the devices that our partners bring to life, it does a whole bunch more. So, for example, when you're talking about inking and touching, um, NTR can absolutely run the Microsoft whiteboard if you connect it up with the touchscreen. Um, the very best experience of a Microsoft whiteboard um, securely is on a Microsoft Surface Hub. So we've bought features um, which is what we call something something called coordinated join, where if you have a Surface Hub inside of a room and you've got an MTR, which is a Microsoft Teams rooms device in there, um, when a user walks into the room, they simply go ahead and hit join on one of the devices. So let's imagine you walk into a room, you hit join on the, on the MTR device, it automatically knows that there's a Surface Hub in that room and it will dial the hub into the meeting it automatically mutes like the cameras, mics, speakers to stop any interference, and it flashes up the Microsoft whiteboard. So at an instant, you have access to the Microsoft whiteboard with the very best experience on a Surface Hub, whereas the MTR handles the very best in audio visual capabilities because it's purpose built for that particular room. Um, you know, we, we can share some details um, um, with you guys after this, um, but there's so much more the Microsoft meeting room portfolio uh, can bring to a meeting much more than just the audio visual experience out there. Yeah, yeah I, I think, I think Mo, just to, just to touch on that, I think, you know, for, and, and we'll move on in a moment and carry on some kind of conscious of time, but I think um, one of the great things that Microsoft has done, and, and Nick Brown, I know you're going to talk about this at the end, but 
Microsoft have invested a huge amount of resource to help customers um, spend a bit more time looking into the depths of Teams meeting rooms and the various different options. And so this, this slide shows literally a highlight of, of some of the, the vendors and, and the, the different solution sets that are out there. Uh, I mean, I generally categorize these into, you know, in, into four, really. So I know there's kind of two key things on here, but the way I look at a lot of these is you've kind of got the traditional meeting room type technology. So it's so kind of what we're seeing um, on, on, on the slide sort of here and here. So these are, you know, the, the, the front of room, multi-camera, single camera, you know, microphone type model. Uh, you've got this newer generation of, of collaboration bars. And these are fantastic. I've got so many customers that are putting these in canteen areas in, you know, in, in almost makeshift, um, you know, collaboration areas where they can get two or three people that need to be and want to be in the office, but still need to collaborate really well. We see a lot of these in the home. I mean, these collaboration bars are, you know, l less than a thousand quid for a full Teams room system. I mean, they're, they're, they're incredible prices. I mean, they're cheaper than the chairs that you probably got in a lot of your rooms. Um, and I think they're really good. But the other thing, of course, that we're seeing a lot of, and, and it's great to see Surface Hub, and, and of course, you know, for, for, for those of you that, that are fans of Surface Hub, it was it was great to finally see, you know, this great big one here, you know, coming out, you know, the 85 inch uh, Surface Hub, which uh, which I'm sure as people do return to work, the, these things will become, uh, will, will become really, really popular. But for me, the big thing that's come, as I said before, is this new category of devices of what they call kind of these collaboration displays, these Teams collaboration displays, which are these small, um, you know, almost iPad type size, all in one Teams room system. They're generally wireless. Most of them have got batteries. You can pick them up and move them around. Um, and they're great. We see a lot of those in, you know, again, front of reception spaces, um, again, you know, zero touch joy and those kind of things in personal offices where you don't always want to be sat in front of a, of a, of a big screen or a big laptop. You know, they, they're great. So I think it's really good to see that that, that kind of mix um, of devices. And, and, you know, the other thing, of course, that we've got is, is you know, we, we can help with these things. We can help drive through a much more detailed session around teams rooms but really kind of what they've got how's the experience work because a, a lot of the confusion i think comes about well there's so many different choices they're all different we just want a common experience across the board and of course that's the great thing that microsoft have done with you know, finally and i kind of you know applaud microsoft for this because the old skype room systems as they were if you had any of those were were kind of Awful is not the right word, right? But any of you that have got Skype room systems will know some of the pain of those uh, of those devices. But these are fantastic. I mean, even though there is, you know, there's the collab bars typically run Android OS, and the the four Teams room systems run run the Microsoft OS. The user experience is completely the same. It's consistent. It's updated. Um, it's intuitive. And, and I think, you know, if you're not using any Teams rooms, they are they are fantastic and i think they are just such a leap forward from what microsoft had in the day of skype i'm sure Iqbal, you'd agree with me there yeah yeah i think the word awful is, is definitely the right word to use for those skype room systems uh, sorry sorry mo if, you, if, you, if you're right. offended by that but uh, um no it has come a long way and, uh, I, I think the the important thing is that it all sits under that team's architecture and uh, that helps to deliver that standardized experience you know from desktop to mobile to the meeting room it's consistent throughout and that's exactly the kind of user experience you do want to deliver um i think there's you know a wide range of technologies i mean some of what we're showing here on one page is probably not even enough i think there's so many vendors that are certified to deliver uh, any type of room system and this is where it becomes quite confusing for for our customers i mean who come to us and they'll say to us so what do you what do you recommend you know do we do we go for a kind of purpose-built um, all-encompassing system like a Yaylink, for instance, or do we go for uh, a system that we, you know, bodge together and, 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 and see whether that works with teams. There's, there's a, lot of, a lot of choice out there. So it's important that you kind of take a step back and, uh, and look at the bigger picture and understand, um, you know, as, as Mo said earlier on, identifying that kind of room persona is really important. And a part of what we do here at Sicilian is help deliver a complete um, intelligent room uh, portfolio, which kind of delivers against both the customer strategy and um, you know also vendor, would de depending on exactly what 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 path the, the, the customers decided on. But ultimately, we want to try and deliver against the way that the customer works because it's as Mo said, it's it's more than just the video and audio. It's all about the whole end to end 
meeting room experience that starts from the point of booking the room to be able to physically attending that room being able to join that room and then you know what happens after that meeting all of that's really really important and as part of this exercise because many customers are on a different part of this journey no no there's no such thing as a greenfield site it's important that we first evaluate exactly what's there today customers have made investments in existing endpoints and technologies and things like that and uh, um you know just kind of drilling into the spe specifics around the services that we deliver um, as part of that kind of evaluation we'll do the kind of site surveys evaluate existing devices as i've said and more important importantly un identify the requirements understand the workflow <clears throat> of how um, you know we want users to be able to work moving forwards once that's done we will help design the right solution so we'll look at the technology and the vendors that are there and uh, we will position the right endpoints for the right rooms um, based on the requirements that we've identified um, we'll document those recommendations and we'll we'll draw up the schematics because um, it's important you know it's uh, you know the the what I guess what I come across sometimes is customers perhaps just go and buy the endpoint off Google or wherever um, they'll, they'll shop for the endpoint and and just just stick it in stick it on top of the screen and just hope for the best. But you know there needs to be proper room remediation done to be able to deliver, as I said, that inclusive experience. So it's really important that you have the camera um, configured and set up in the right position um, the screens all set up properly you've got the audio uh, speakers and mics all set up and positioned in 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 the right space based on the room size and the number of seats all of those things are taken into consideration and uh, um, we've been doing this now for for 10 years i think or more uh, helping customers enable meeting rooms so we'll, we'll kind of bring that experience into the equation and help kind of build out that room properly the way it should be done um, to, to really kind of deliver that that full experience and and once we've got to that point and we've decided on the technology we will obviously procure that equipment and and all of the kind of ancillary um, items that go along with it we will do all of the audio visual integration where necessary you know for the larger rooms there's a lot more integration needed um, some customers like to be able to manage their lights and blinds and things like that if necessary that's that's all there we will we will help do do that installation and integration we'll of course install the endpoint endpoint and and set that up uh, um, for our customers um, and and as well as that kind of moving into the integration piece which is quite an important one actually is, is ensuring that it does tie into the existing and new workflows that 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 we've um, identified at the outset we'll also look at the room booking system i think this is an important one and sometimes does get missed um, there's a load of vendors out there that deliver these services so it's understanding how we can use a combination of exchange um, the room booking system platform that's being utilized um, and seeing how all of that ties together and making sure that it does does come together quite well because there's cust every customer has a different requirement you know some customers need to be able to deliver a a proper concierge service where they're delivering food and drinks and things like that how how where does where does that where's all where does all that information sit and how can that tie into that kind of room booking process? So we'll 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 make sure that gets fully integrated, um, and then legacy. Then how do we ensure that you know if there are legacy endpoints and you have um, external uh, guests who need to be able to join through third party video conferencing? Um, how how can we enable that? Because not everybody's on Teams, right? Let's be let's be honest. Uh, you know, it, the, if the whole world was on Teams, this would be easier. But that's not the case. Um, but there's a solution for it. You know, so Microsoft have got their cloud video video interrupt solution, and we partner with the likes of Poly, Pexip, and Cisco to deliver that CVI solution to to really start to um, incorporate other vendors into the team's ecosystem so that, that's an important one and then add-ons you know how can we really start to leverage the, this meeting room space you know um, mo talked about you know capacity management within rooms you know making sure that we enable those features and capabilities um, digital signage is another one you've got this real estate you've got a big screen on the wall how can we start to perhaps use that screen to to showcase or publish information about the company or maybe even use that to help help users um, with training so providing t hints and tips around how they can make the most of the meeting room space or, or teams as a whole um, and then 
taking it a step further, there are still customers that like that white glove service that would like to pr have more assistance depending on the size of the meeting and we can we can certainly offer that and then just as a just to finish up we're seeing uh, many live events taking place now um, many customers as they are trying to reach their global user audience um, they, they need assistance in, in managing those live events and we'll, we'll, we'll certainly help um, and deliver that <clears throat> And just to kind of finish off the last two points, um, you know, none of this is possible or none of this will, uh, I guess, will be successful without proper adoption and will help our customers um, fully adopt these technologies. Um, you know, once we've identified, we'll help develop the workflow. We will then use that workflow to tailor, make and, in, uh, and design an enablement comm strategy to ensure that all of the users are aware of these new technology that's being deployed, particularly as they get come back to the office. You know, you don't want to be surprising them with too many new things um, as, as, as change can be a bit disruptive. Let's make sure that we educate the user community so they know actually once they do come in that the environment is ready to kind of support them with the way they work so they can continue to operate. Um, and that, that includes things like creating content, learning platforms, um, and then there's obviously there's reporting and uh, um, we can gain insights around how users are adopting these technology, technologies. You know, we've got the ability to capture the um, usage of these services and these endpoints, seeing how many people attend these meetings, how many people are in rooms, all of that insight can help us understand how well all of this is being adopted. Um, and then you know, what we, we kind of pride ourselves in not just walking away from just going in to deploy an endpoint and just leaving you to it. We'll be there with the aftercare where we can deliver a full 24 seven managed, managed support services. I know most of our customers are aware of this, but um, you know, we can get really granular in the way we can deliver these services in terms of being able to manage and monitor these rooms, deliver a proactive service with automation built in, live monitoring around utilization, quality of service, all of those things. So we're, we're, we're getting a good view of exactly what's going on across all of your rooms. And then more importantly, managing those endpoints and devices um, through software updates. And, and all of that for us is kind of automated as part of the kind of managed service offering that we deliver. Um, so that's kind of 10,000 foot view of kind of an end-to-end -end service. We've really thought about this. We've really, you know, we, we want to try and deliver customer success with these with these rooms and uh, um, we need we want to ensure that customers you know gain the real benefits of this. So hopefully that gives our viewers a flavor of this. You know, um, we've got a few more minutes left. So if there's any questions out there, please post them in the comments and uh, um, you've got the right people on here to try and answer that. Um, we could probably go on all day about this stuff because it's, uh, I, I, I mean, Mo, I, I, lo I love the technology. I love metering room. I'm really passionate about metering room devices as well. So um, yeah, so that's kind of Cecilia's view on it. I, Mo, back to you. I don't know if you've got any final thoughts before we conclude. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can't stress how important that part you just spoke about is. Um, getting that experience right the first time is, is really key. I mean, the biggest issues that we see and have had where, you know, Teams Rooms has failed, as an example, is where it's been deployed wrong. Um, and, you know, it starts off at the very beginning. It starts off from the infrastructure side of things. Are you, is your infrastructure correct in order to be able to handle a meeting room space? So, um, and then there's the, the, the classic things like, are you in, you know, have you got the right cameras and mics for the type of room and the acoustics within the room? So, you know, I highly recommend to all of our viewers that, you know, proof of concepts and speaking with, you know, the team here at Sicilian is really key to get that first initial device in there correctly and then you will get the very best experiences that Microsoft want you to experience. Yeah, and I think I just wanted to pick up on one of the questions that had, uh, had come through. Thank you, actually, for, for sticking that on the screen. Um, you know, we, we, we've had, um, there, there, there were lots of energy in the space, as, as we say. I think it's really great. You know, we, we, I only really hear positive things about Teams meeting rooms. We, we, did, a, we did a meeting room deployment actually last week for, for a customer that was new to Teams, had moved off another platform on, on, onto Teams. And, and it's fantastic, the feedback that you actually get, not just from IT, because, you know, IT will make things work, but actually just from the user base around, you know, wow. And I think for some, for some it really is that wow moment. 
Um, Surface Hub has that, right? And, and absolutely anyone that's got a Surface Hub and, uh, and used a Surface Hub, they generally love them. Um, the, the the question that came in actually is, is is very commonplace, right? And I think a lot of people look at anything with a big price tag on it um, and go, whoa, that's a lot of money. You know, surely I can just put a, a touch screen in the room and, and plug a Surface into it and, and those kind of things. And I think, you know, a, a lot of this is always about building that 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 business case around actually, well, why do I need a screen I can I, I can touch? And I think a lot of that comes back to to a couple of things. Firstly, is the use case of that of that room, right? So you you, you see a lot of organisations wanting a Surface Hub because it's a Surface Hub, and 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 obviously, go and get one, play with it, use it. You know, the the new ones are light, they're mobile. You can move them around. You can get battery packs for them. So you know, in which we see a lot in education now is kind of getting rid of the physical whiteboard at the front of the room and the big projector, and actually taking a physical board and, and moving it around without worrying about power. Um, but also think about the way that you uh, buy these things as well. And I think one of the things that we're seeing a lot of at the moment um, is that, you know, meeting rooms aren't, if you think about the way that you buy PCs and laptops and mobile phones and stuff, they are um, not quite disposable, but you, you generally refresh them every three years because the hardware is evolving, you know, things like the camera lenses and the smart technology and these things is evolving. And meeting rooms are the same. And if you look at the cost of meeting room technology now compared to what it was five, six, you know, years ago and beyond, the price point, as I said before, is is kind of the cost of most of your chairs, right? It's, it, it's not that expensive. Surface Hub aside, I'll give you that, that, that they're not the cheapest. But think about the refresh of those devices and i think you know we we see lots of customers buying devices as a service so they'll buy laptops and you know thin clients and whatever they do and they, they're on a refresh schedule so they pay for them monthly every three years those devices are refreshed and we're seeing the same in meeting rooms now you know we, we've done a couple of deployments for customers where they buy you know they're investing in three four hundred meeting rooms um and rather than that be a capex expenditure um they're doing that on a on, on a monthly you know on a monthly fee with then after two and a half or three years um, a refresh being scheduled of those rooms to take them to the latest, you know, the latest models of those rooms. Um, and I think that's certainly something, you know, as, as organizations start to shift towards that kind of OPEX model um, would, would be interesting to see. So I think definitely look at that. Excellent. Um, I think we're probably coming to the end of the kind of session. Um, uh, I don't know if there's any more questions um, anybody else would like to ask, um, but we'll, we'll happily kind of follow up. As we said, you know, we, we do kind of bespoke workshops for our customers to help try and build out the right solutions. Um, and that's probably where we would start with with most, most people. I know there's lots of varied questions depending on where they are on the journey in, in being able to enable and deploy these um, devices and systems um, and and we can pretty much make make anything work uh, um, based based on you know either existing investments but ultimately we want to try and deliver a standardized experience for for all of our customers across every room and that's the vision that we'll, we'll work towards whether that's more of a long-term um, strategy or short term we'll, we'll obviously you know happy to kind of work work in in, in, in the most flexible way possible um, so just I guess as final thoughts from you guys um, Mo, before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to to say? Any other comments? And also, how can I get hold of that T-shirt? Because um, I, I, need to, I need to get my hands on one of them. Watch this space. <laughs> Watch this space with the T-shirts. I'm working out to try and get some. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, it's for me, you know, just final thoughts is, wow, you know, like I said earlier on, we, we, we live in this new way of working now. Unfortunately, it's kind of here to stay for at least, you know, the next couple of years. And, you know, to ensure that our businesses are successful, to ensure that we can work effectively, use the uh, equipment that we have uh, in terms of Microsoft Teams and MTR, speak with the team here at Sicilian. There is a way to pretty much do anything. I've seen a few comments come through on YouTube. Um, I'd love to answer them. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. But from a Microsoft standpoint, we did a whole bunch of announcements from Ignite. We're bringing huge, huge changes to Teams with things like voting buttons, things like new backgrounds, uh, things to really help with this new hybrid way of working. We changed a lot of our priorities, a lot of our, our roadmap to deprioritize things and prioritize others just based on the way the world is today. So final thoughts for me is uh, reach out to the team here at Sicilian. 
Um, I support these guys 100%. They're a strategic partner of, uh, of mine, so I work very closely to help ensure we build the correct solutions for you. Um, and uh, try them out. I'm pretty sure you'll be surprised at how well these devices work. Thank you, Mo. I think I think last comment for me. I think I, so. Thank you for for the kind words. Thank you for committing to get some t-shirts because I think you all. <laughs> um, no, and, and I think the same. I think you know. Um, feel free to try. You know, I think a lot. You know, most of the vendors that we work with will offer trials. Um, you know, we, we we can run workshops with you. Microsoft typically fund those workshops. I think we'll we're going to we'll follow up with everyone that that that, that hasn't said they don't want to be followed up with uh, on the back of this as well. Uh, we do also have some uh, some um, giveaways as well, which we'll we'll share the details of in form of a raffle on, on the back of this. But from our sponsor, Yaylink, so we do have some uh, some uh, home home working enhancement kits to, uh, to 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 give away. But I think you know do do talk to us. You know do spend some time looking at Microsoft's website on, on Teams Rooms. Do try some out. Um, and yeah, you know any, anything you need, we're here. Excellent. Um, so just, I guess, finally, on, on that point, um, whilst we're not all in, in, in our offices yet, but we, we, we do in London, in central London, Liverpool Street, we've got our own, own, uh, our own innovation centre where we can demonstrate some of this capability. So we've got technology like Yaling, Poly, Surface Hub 1 and Surface Hub 2 deployed, um, where we can actually demonstrate some of this capability to try and really bring it to life to show you what all of those workflows um, work closely with you guys to, to really understand how this could look like in your environment. And um, moving on from that, trials and proof of concepts, pilots, all of that good stuff where we'll, we're, you know, we're helping with customers today already to, 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 to gain the confidence in, in the technology before making that kind of that, that leap, leap forward to, to really start to standardize um, across the business. So yeah, do get in touch. We'll obviously be in touch with everybody who's registered um, around the, the endpoints that we're giving away. But um, on that note, I'd like to thank Rob and Mel. Thank you for your time. Really enjoyed the session today and I hope everybody else uh, did as well. Take care. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks very much. Sure. Cheers.